radio, the old record player, those were the first instruments, I guess, first things I really learned how to play, and it's true. I mean, you know, didn't we all sort of throw a record on and kind of go, whoa, I like playing records. I like playing the radio. And then from there, I think, uh, you know, growing up um, just on the other side of the river from Detroit in the early and mid to late 60s, you know, there was a plethora of great music coming out of Detroit, Motown, and with stations like CKOW where you got, really got a great smattering of the cheesiest to the greatest artistic uh, songs of the day. Um, you know, so I think I fell in love with radio and the, and the beauty of the mystery behind the airwaves far longer before I really gravitated towards instruments, but I'd probably say that my biggest, or the first influence was certainly my brothers because, um, you know, there were instruments around the house. Everyone, I'm the youngest of five kids, you know, everyone received music lessons except myself and I'm strangely enough the only one that ever pursued music as a career. And I uh, imagine maybe those instruments hanging around the house is really what was the impetus behind perhaps what I'm doing now. Particularly my brother Billy's electric guitar. And, uh, you know, getting my first couple of lessons and chords from him, probably that was certainly the very beginning. And I still have that guitar, actually. I still have my oldest brother's first electric guitar that he owned, and, and I own that presently and uh, a really cool little tube national amplifier that accompanied that. Ground control to Major Tom Ground control to Major Tom Take your protein pills and put your helmet I basically per did end up pursuing it on my own because uh, as much as, <laughs> I hate to say that because probably my older brother will watch this sometime, but he lost patience with me rather quickly in terms of teaching me guitar and I can actually remember almost the day in the words that he spoke to me when he finally had had enough in terms of trying to show me chords and being frustrated with me in terms of not being able to perhaps finger it properly. And then on, I think I sort of inherently knew that I was going to be on my own from here on out. So uh, I really did pursue and learn by ear and uh, quickly discovered that in my teen years that I did have a pretty decent year in terms of um, picking up a guitar and putting on a record and quickly figuring out the not only the key that the song was in, but the chord as well, so that certainly has helped. Off the moon, planet Earth is blue, and there's nothing I can do. I don't know if that's a nature or nurture sort of gift that's been bestowed, but um, it's served me well and it's largely in part of what I'm doing now because it's all, um, you know, I teach myself all the parts and sort of take it from there. Well, I'm past 100,000 miles, feeling very still. Guitar was first. I learned the harmonica uh, hitchhiking to California after graduating from from high school, I guess it was. You know, sit, standing on the side of the road waiting for a ride. You know, I pull out my pocket harmonica. And 
Spend hours at the side of the road learning how to play that. I learned how to bend a note doing that. Standing by the side of the road. I've never been a drummer. As a matter of fact, my first drum kit as a one-man band was really a, uh, uh, a, a kick drum that someone had given me somewhere out in Calgary, and I it sat out in my back deck for years as a beer cooler in the summertime. Just fill this thing up with beer and ice, and it was a really cool way to keep your beer cold in the summertime. So uh, when it come, came time to build my first one-man band, I took that old beer cooler slash kick drum and modified it and turned it back into a plain instrument and strapped it in my ass and here we are. <laughs> uh, and along the way I've also learned how to play the fiddle a little bit and the banjo, you know, dabbling in. I have a couple of accordions at home that I play a, one or two songs on. And instruments are just fascinating, aren't they? I do remember my first royalty check, and I think it's still the only royalty check. It was for $12.50, and I never cashed it. I actually have it framed somewhere in a box. Um, it was funny because I think Sokan contacted me later on and said, hey, you didn't cash your that check, so we're going to send you another one. I thought, okay, that's cool. So I have two Sokan checks. One I didn't cash, and I think one I did for $12.50 or something. Thank you. <laughs> that goes out to Chris Hadfield, our parade marshal. When I'm traveling, I listen to a lot of jazz in, in the Vandaloni, from one place to the next. I listen to a lot of NPR when I'm driving, and I listen to a lot of silence and wind through the windows. Quite often, I just like the, the silence of the universe. It's very appealing. Music is always sort of present in my life, one form or another, but uh, I do, I honestly do require a certain amount of silence. Because I think that's where it really happens. Uh, of course, that's the trick, and that is something that I'm continually working on, meditating and finding that inner peace and inner silence and inner reflection. Can I turn it off? Well, I'm getting better at it, but it's so much noise in the world, so much noise in our lives anymore, so much noise, so much form coming our way all the time. So it's a matter of shutting it out. Well, I'm never satisfied with where I am, so I'm, I'm always trying to push the act and improve or at least take it, in, take it down a different road or, you know, make a U-turn, or I shouldn't say U-turn, make a left or a right turn or, you know, hey, let's see what happens down here. What if I did, hooked up another drumstick up here? And, how could I have, how can I make this happen? Yeah, my brain's kind of operating on that level in many respects. And when I hear a piece of music, I'm always continually listening to it from a one-man band perspective and whether or not it's a one I could pull off or how one could pull something like that off. So that's certainly going through my mind often. Um, yeah, I'm certainly quite capable of turning it off though. You have to. You can't. You can't just have your processors firing all the time. You gotta turn on the fan once in a while and <laughs> put it on sleep mode. Ever since getting out of high school, I can think my philosophy had always been to do not not to take any jobs or work that I didn't love or appreciate. So I've always been one that respect or another worked in audio, whether it would be selling mid and high-end audio equipment, 
I've worked, uh, you know, sound stages as a technician and uh, at various festivals around Alberta. And having a visual art background, uh, that was always a big proponent. So for me, you know, the the whole one man band thing is kind of a culmination of visual art, music. I still get to work with my hands and construct all the equipment. I'm working with audio. Uh, even the sales comes into into play here. Um, I guess you have to build it, play it, and sell it. That's kind of the three key ingredients to, I think, a successful one-man band. Probably any band, for that matter. So you're wearing all the hats. Wearing all the hats. And my own groupie most nights. We just walked up on you. It's like amazing. That's, I can't believe. I know I'm a musician too. Are you? But but I can't believe how hard this must be to do. I, I can't even imagine trying to do. That, especially coming from musicians. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean to do all this together. You know, I, I think I recognize that there's an expiry date built into Bandaloni. I just don't know when that is. Or, um, I think I will know when it's time. Just like anything, um, as, and you talk to any entertainer, there's a certain amount of burnout that can be experienced, especially after 14 years and as much travel and, uh, and time and effort and energy it requires to do this and I'm not complaining, it's certainly a labor of love, but it does weigh on you at times. Now my hair has turned to silver, all my life I've loved in vain. Regardless, I think I'll always be doing something creative and something challenging and uh, you know, whether that's cooking, which I love to do, and it's I look at cooking and visual art and painting and sculpture and music you know I kind of lump them all in the same basket in that you know you're basically it's everything is a recipe and ingredients that you're putting together in one fashion or another and seeing what you kind of come up with so. my true self I think shines through in many respects when I'm performing um, certainly there's a there's a Keep and helping of shtick tossed in there too, <laughs> for good measure. But as my dad used to say, Paul, sell corn, sell corn. <laughs> and, and he didn't mean the stuff that grows, so I guess I ended up selling corn in the end. <laughs> I'm a corn salesman. <laughs> 